Rick, you had some really strong runs, a little bit of up and downs off the start of the marathon, but you really poured it on strong lately. Uh, how are you going to keep that lead ahead of uh, uh, Chad and John going into tomorrow's racing up uh, 61 miles up to the Berlin River Bridge and back? Tomorrow I'm going to try and play it safe and, and just look for that clean water and hopefully if I see an opening I'm going to go for it hard. If not, I'm going to just lay back and save my boat for the for the run down. Yeah. Barry Fenton currently sitting sixth in the CX class. You've kind of been in the shadows a little bit, but being a steady Eddie and right there in every uh, every leg of this marathon. Uh, but Barry, you're actually running a bit of a unique setup here. you got two navigators uh, sitting beside you. Why don't you talk about that a little bit? We're going to do something a little different that we haven't done before. We're going to run a navigator up and then the other one's in for the, for the trip down. So... Uh, they both got pretty good idea where we're going, and uh, they both got a couple of shortcuts they want to try on the way down. If things work out, it should be good. <laughs> awesome. Well, it sounds like it's a pretty good uh, family setup you guys have here with the backdraft team. Do you guys got any behind-the-scenes betting going on between the navigators and who's going to get you up there faster or back faster? Uh, no, that's a, that's a good idea, though. They might just get something going on. Uh, they, they usually play rock, paper, scissors as to who's going to get in there. Uh, and I'm not sure if the loser gets in or the, or the winner. With uh, fighting buckles on the way up and then equally as competitive on the way down, just talk about like a bit of the mayhem there in the CX class. Oh, I don't know if it was mayhem. We were just having a bit of fun, really, I think. So, uh, yeah, we, um, we were having a, just a solid run going up there. They, they got a better start than us, so we just sat them behind them. The boat's very, very... Very competitive for speed, well, pretty much close to the same. So, yeah, we just sat behind. Then you guys pulled up in the helicopter, so we thought, oh, we'll give it a bit of a put on a bit of a show. <laughs> you guys came into White Court here, sitting fifth after the Taylor races, uh, after a DNF with uh, Brian Freeland, Trevor Yoakum, uh, unfortunately coming in a little bit off of your guys' heat time. Uh, do you think that move bumped you up into that third spot? Do you think you'll leapfrog from fifth to third today? Yeah, it could possibly. I mean, I never like to jump to conclusions. We'll just uh, wait and see what happens here with the times. You know, uh, we certainly hope maybe we did get into that uh, spot and uh, it'd be great to finish and, uh, you know, third at the end of today and you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. I mean, we've been just kind of toughing it out here. We haven't had a great race and uh, not being our uh, typical runs, but I mean, maybe things will come together here and uh, finish out all right at the end of the day. Um, um, we've got Spencer pretty close behind us, so, uh, you know, today we're just pushing hard to try and keep ahead of him and, and, uh, and uh, try and keep a bit of a buffer between us and him for the circuit races tomorrow. Is it... Uh Kind of a different feeling being that uh, NZ1 isn't here to represent the overall title and you're kind of everything's on your shoulders to maybe uh, represent that NZ1 right now? Well, it took him a long time to get that back at home really, didn't it? So, uh, so yeah, it's a shame that Regan's not here to, uh, to help us uh, clean the boat and stuff like that, but uh, he's definitely following us pretty closely at home, that's for sure. We're hearing a lot from him.